as I'm reiterating, this elk fork drainage was was a measure of the elk that we had available to be able to hunt. To make sure that we had the numbers if we allowed, allowed you know, hunting and so forth. Everybody hunted with an over-the-counter general hunting license for elk in the entirety of Wyoming and right here where I'm talking about. It was very important as far as a tool to understand what was available. But these wolves gravitated, basically gravitated to that area of the North Fork here in the Elk Fork drainage because there was a tremendous amount of elk winning there and they could just turn left and right and just kill elk just however they wanted to at any time to fill their bellies. Well, these elk have, and other wildlife, has a tremendous built-in system. They soon figured out, and gradually elk wouldn't winter in the valley. Last winter, my son made several trips way into the valley, 13 miles into the valley, and not much wintered ever above that and there was hardly no elk at all wintering in the valley. In fact is, he only saw a sign of one elk wintering in the valley. And we've been in tremendous amount of other drainages here in the valley where no, some numbers of elk have historically wintered. They no longer winter. I was, I was out yesterday and saw a herd of about 100 head elk mid-length of the valley, just a about three miles east of where I live further west of here and that's probably the biggest herd of elk in the entire valley. I'm trying to detail all these things to show you what happens. It doesn't make any difference where it is whether it's here in this part of the country, it's in the north country or some other place in the world where wolves are the same thing happens everywhere and anybody that's got any mind or any sense knows exactly what happens. So undoubtedly some of these people in our game department knowing, knowing what happened and knowing how these things happened and as we got infiltrated here into the game department with some of these environmental type of people. You got to understand there's hardly no nobody in the game department, only just a few people that occasionally do any hunting. These things that have happened, it's not in their backyard, it's in my backyard, my front yard, my side yard, I mean every place I go. Everything has been destroyed not just here in the valley but in the entire Bighorn Basin. We've experienced here for about eight years running tremendous amounts of elk that, mig that migrate have left these mountains in these historic wintering areas and went on to private ranches and farms in the low country. Now because of this we've got ranch people and farm people that are trying to dictate our wildlife. We've got people that have these properties that these elk are wintering and feeding on, feeding on their, on their, you know, on their pastures and one thing or another. And I can sympathize only up to a point, but it's turned into something worse than that. It's turned into a situation where we have private property owners that are pimping my wildlife for profit charging a trespass fee, $2,000 to trespass on their property to kill a cow elk. I've heard ten, twelve dollars to $15,000 to kill a nice trophy bull on their private properties. Now there's laws put in place in Wyoming to do with outfitting. These people are outfitting in some instances, not in every instance, and they're getting paid, they're getting paid for pimping the wildlife that belongs to the 
people of the state of Wyoming. All this wildlife belongs to the people of the state of Wyoming. But we have hardly no say. Our game department has saw to that. They have meetings now where you really don't get to talk, you really don't get to be involved, but they make you feel like you're involved because they divide up, say, 70 people into, into 10 groups of seven, and they sit around a table and come up with a few ideas, and they pass this down the line to the game department people up front to make everybody feel real, real nice and fuzzy and warm that they're being involved in wildlife management. Well, I'm going to give you a clue, folks. Wildlife management is a figment of the game and game department's imagination. It's impossible to manage wildlife. All these game department people can do is manage people. And quite simply put, management of people is nothing but socialism. So with all these things that in mind, this boils down to, to socialistic terrorists is what our game department people are. And it starts right at the top. The director of the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, it starts right there and other people involved. We've got all sorts of people involved. We've got people that oversee the wolf aspect. We've got people that oversee our, our bear aspect. We've got a people that oversee our fisheries. We've got people that oversee our game herds and divide it up into various situations. We've got game commissioners. We've got quite a number of game commissioners, you know, that, that are appointed. And the, the director of the Wyoming Game and Fish Department is appointed, is appointed by, by the governor. We're on the third governor now since these wolves were introduced. And none of these governors have done one damn thing to see that what we had here hasn't been destroyed. It isn't just the game aspect that's been destroyed. What we've got going on here, folks, is the destruction of hunting. These wolves were brought in here with no doubt on purpose to destroy all hunting in every way, shape, and form that they possibly can. They were in violation when they brought them in here. They have in place provisions that don't allow invasive species. In other words, this wolf is the world's largest invasive species, but the game department promoted it, and the governor brought it in here, and he oversees the game department. You kind of getting some picture here? You getting the drift? Yeah. Pretty easy to get it. Pretty easy to understand. Yeah, just follow the money trail, folks. It's all about money. The most important thing here in Wyoming is the game and fishes paycheck and their retirement and the hell with the wildlife. They could care less. All they look at to do with this game is their paycheck. That's what's important. And this is not game management at all, folks. This is, this is socialism. We're being hoodwinked and to believe that we've got game management. I just read a couple of days ago in the December Wyoming Wildlife put out by the game department. Our director, his name is Brian Nesvik from Cheyenne, says that we have the most wonderful experienced wildlife managers of anywhere in the, anywhere in the system. B.S. These people aren't wildlife managers. These people are socialistic terrorists, including the director of the Game and Fish. They talk one, one talk out of one side of their mouth and they do something entirely different, sitting down in their meetings right at the table, their private damn meetings that they have week after week, and contrive ways to control people. This is involved in another great way, taking away our Second Amendment rights. If they can't come physically and take away our firearms, they can do it through incrementalism of taking away all of our opportunities. So what in the world will we need a gun for if we don't 
if we don't have anything to hunt. This is another approach. These sorts of things have been going on to do with this gun situation for a long, long time. And it's, it started here, from my perspective, from what I saw in the early 70s, when an area game warden here that basically had to have in his nose into everybody that was in the out of doors business, the guy's name was Dave Pagonia. Dave Pagonia violated more people's constitutional rights while being a game, to, game warden in this area than anybody before or since in Wyoming. This is where these things started. And this is where these ideas started. This is where this, this socialistic terrorism really started. Is right there with this man. And undoubtedly going on right there, right there in Cheyenne. You see, probably our director that we had at the time in Cheyenne. Because these these people, as soon as you head to the mountains, as soon as you head to the mountains in the fall here for a considerable number of years that I've seen, you park your, your truck, your horse trailer, and you ride into the mountains for a week or ten days to hunt. Within a day or so, these game game wardens and game biologists and the Forest Service, they're right in there. They just can't stand it that you're back there in the mountains. This is the central focus of this. That they love their paycheck, they love their retirement, but they don't love the wildlife and they don't love you. They can't stand you because you stand up for what you built. Your dollars built the entire system and my dollars built the entire system. But they're taking it and destroying it. Last year, there was somewhere right around 17 or 18 million dollars kicked back from the Pittman Robertson's funds to Wyoming because this money comes back to the states from sales of all hunting and sporting type equipment, outdoor equipment. These monies, these monies are being used along with your license money from everything that you spend with the game department is being used to destroy what you built and they don't care. You can sit down and talk to them as I and others have to great length and you don't get anywhere. It goes right in one ear and out the other. And for quite a number of years when you bought a hunting license you got license information, application information, it was toted in that information that the Wyoming Game and Fish Department followed the North American Model of Wildlife Conservation. Well, years ago, they did. And this is what built this tremendous system. Everybody, there was not a question of it. But my son and I, sitting across the table from five of these people, asked, I asked a question, you follow this plan of game management, but you no longer follow it, and I want to know what you follow today. And the answer from our Cody District Game and Fish Supervisor, Alan Osterlin, was we have constituents. Well, guess who in the world the constituents are? The constituents are these environmental-minded people that can't stand at the you hunt, that you like to eat elk meat, moose meat, and sheep meat, and deer, and whatever it might happen to be, they just can't stand it. This is why these things are going on. We've got a tremendous drive at this point in time by these environmentalists to introduce wolves into Colorado. And I certainly hope, I certainly hope that that whole plan is derailed. These environmentalists, these folks, want to see these animals every place. For one thing, these game wardens can't stand it that you're out there. Now here's your real clue, folks. If there's not any game out there to hunt, 
then hunters are not out there and they don't have to be out there getting their nose in your business. Now, I'm going to make some comparisons here. When we get up to a certain age, we're allowed to buy a driver's license. Yeah, we are allowed to buy a driver's license. And with that driver's license, we have to follow some laws to do with driving motorized vehicles and so forth, just like we've got to follow some laws when we buy a hunting license. But here's the deal. I've just had a hunting license for six months or a year or whatever. The law dogs aren't following me around and walking into the Walmart store or to, to any other type of department store or stopping me on the street and asking me what I'm doing because I have parked my motorized vehicle down the street and they see it and they recognize that number on the license plate as being belonging to, to me or her or whomever else. That isn't what goes on. Now if you broke the law and they're looking for you, they need to come and check you out. But quite to the contrary, the game department people have the idea that everybody that buys a hunting license is just a no good damn scoundrel. Well that's just simply not the truth. That's all just nothing but nonsense. So they go to great lengths to go into the mountains to see what you're doing and everything else. And when this stuff's all taken away, they don't have to do that any longer. They can sit, they can sit in their office and mess around with their computers and play with their mouse all damn day long and that will just make them just happier than larks. Because now they're not out here because we're not out here. And we've got, we've got situations that are completely out of control here. And I'm trying to bring all these things to light because it's going to happen in your neighborhood. It's going to happen in your state. It's probably already happening to some extent in your, your neighborhood or your state what's going on because this is this is what's going on we don't need we don't need this sort of aspect in this country we have we have graves all over this country of people that fought for our freedoms freedoms in this country and we can't handle this sort of situation it's, it's just absolutely terrible what these people hang on with tremendous amounts of time on their hands, sitting in offices or dreaming up to take away from you, to take away from I and everybody else. I'm involved here because this has been my life. This has been my passion. This is what I do. And I'm going to continue to do as long as, as, long as the good Lord is, is willing and that I'm able to do so. We need to have more people involved. We need to have people that understand. We need to be doing everything that's possible from every angle to take care of these situations. And we have, we have an Idaho Game Department and the Idaho Game Commission. Wolves have populated themselves so heavily in Idaho that, that they it started a program some while ago here over in Idaho. They're killing off a lot of wolves and a month ago I understood they killed 575 wolves. The Elk Foundation has got involved and they're putting on fundraisers to come up with monies to pay out bounties. Right now folks you can go to Idaho and buy 20 wolf permits and they will pay you somewhere between 400 and a thousand dollars for every wolf you kill the variation in the prices here is they'll pay for your expenses even to kill these wolves. They've done a tremendous amount of job of killing these wolves. There are people that are involved in Montana with this and they've tried to get the Wyoming Game Department involved and they won't have anything to do with it. Because the Wyoming Game Department is selling you and I and everybody else down the tube. People for years and years have wanted to come to Wyoming various parts of Wyoming to hunt. Well I can tell you the hunting has really really gotten bad to do with our elk, elk and deer in Wyoming. 
this this part of Wyoming the specific part of Wyoming that is hit is what is known as the trophy zone for wolves in Wyoming there's a limited quota situation we have 60 plus wolves here in the valley the fella here in the in the Cody game department office by the name Andy Johnson encouraged him to have a quota of 15 wolves here in the valley we've got about 60 wolves and the state coordinator for wolves nixed it he said we're only going to have six well that really makes a guy feel bad and if we've got game managers they're not they're not allowed to do what they want to do because the director and others in Cheyenne dictate everything so if they're going to dictate everything guy sits in Cheyenne he doesn't live right here where I live in the North Fork of the Shoshone West of Cody he doesn't really know exactly what's going on he hasn't had this destroyed what he loves maybe we ought to destroy everything that that guy loves and maybe it, maybe it would catch on you see this is exactly what we've got going on here they have destroyed it for me they've destroyed every economic aspect built around everything to do with guns and hunting and shooting in the out of doors and there's nobody accountable but we have got to have something done we have got to have something done and it is called killing wolves killing wolves and killing wolves to protect this wildlife because we really don't have Wyoming without wildlife it's, this area here has become a wildlife desert where I live yeah there's some wildlife a very small remnant and that's what people see is this very small remnant this has gotten terrible and this has got to come to a screeching halt it's got to there's got to be a turnaround there's got to be something done about it